Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're listening to the podcast Capturing Magic. I'm Bill Rogers, the voice of Disney. Thanks very much for listening. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Capturing Magic. I'm Steph Clay, and I'm here today with Heather Winfield, who can be found at heatherw.com forward slash character and heatherw25 on social media. Hi, Heather. Hi. And then Tanya Hickman, who who can be found at everymagicmoment.com and TanyaH666 on social media. Yep. Okay, we're on day two of our binge recording. And yes. we're on episode three or four, so we might be getting a little bit punchy, but <laughs> <laughs> episode three or four of today is what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> today's session. As I mentioned in a previous podcast, we're kind of changing how we do things. We've always kind of binge recorded as our schedules will allow because it proves to be difficult to get all three of us together when one of us isn't Disneying. <laughs> and so we we just record a whole bunch of episodes and we were drip releasing those, but now we're just going to release them all at once and y'all can binge listen until you're sick to death of us <laughs> <laughs> and may never, ever listen again. <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. So this episode, we are talking about what we spend on food at Disney and kind of some budget saving tips and tricks. And this is, here's the story behind this. When we had, it had been several years in between Disney trips for us. And I was trying to figure out how much money to budget for food. And I could not find anything that was good, solid information on what to plan for food. I knew what the Disney dining plan cost, but I was fairly certain that I could feed our family for less than the, I think it was $60 a day at that time. It's a lot more for the, for the middle line meal plan. Mm -hmm. I think at that time it was like $60 per person per day. And I figured that I could do it for less. And so I just, I couldn't find any information. I wanted, what I really was hoping for was someone to tell me where they ate, how much they spent, and how much food they got. Because I didn't feel like I needed a dessert and an appetizer and a main course for every person in our group, every single meal. And that's what you get with the Disney dining plan. Yeah, it's a lot of food. It's for a I mean, that's of food. And it's a, taking a lot of time out of your day to get your money's worth. Yes. Yes. And there are blogs out there that have gone through and figured out how to maximize what you're getting for the for the Disney dining plan, you know, what to order at what restaurant so that you're getting the most expensive dish, blah blah blah. I do not want to have to worry about that either. Yeah. So, it's too much work. <laughs> yes. And and we did back in 2006 when we went, we did get free dining that trip. And that's, I think, the only time that we've done the dining plan ever. Um, It was great to have it. I loved it. But it seems like it's getting more and more and more expensive. They just had a price increase. Yeah. And didn't it go up to about $70 per person per day for the... Yeah. It was... uh, It's for 2018. It's... um, I have it right here. It was um, 70 Five forty nine. Uh, it went up. Yeah, it went up like eight point eight four percent from the previous year, and like every year it keeps going up. And like I, when we first started going, we would get the dining plan, and we got the free dining plan two thousand eight, I think. And then I think we got it like one more year, and that was it. Because they, when we first started doing it, they would include an appetizer, and like, because my mom likes to get appetizers, but she doesn't really like to get dessert. But then they got rid of the appetizer. And they included tip, I think, when the first they first had it, and so it, I feel like it was like thirty something dollars when we first had it. So it was like a huge difference, and that, that was probably worth it. I mean, yeah, I yeah. mean that was there fifty dollars maybe, but I, I mean, I eat a lot and I like to eat, and I don't eat seventy five dollars a day in food. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, when we like first went. And I mean, maybe like for some people, like when it's, you know, if they go like once a year, when you know, every, every few years or whatever, like you have, like you want to eat somewhere every day. Yeah. And that's not the way like I 
do it now. You know, like I maybe I'll have like a sit down meal, maybe two, you know, like if I'm doing like a character meal or something. But I don't really do like sit down meals every day and like, you know, the quick start, like all the kind of ways that it is now. So I've been hearing that it's kind of been going because I guess it's expensive and everything that it hasn't been doing as well. And that's why they for 2018, they added you get like a special drink or like alcohol so they added oh, that this alcohol time. is involved yeah <laughs> but but yeah i don't know that's gonna be difficult for some that's, that's, and so. especially if you're a family of four or five a that's expensive per day mm-hmm. and if you have um like those middle range kids that are picky and don't eat as much yes and you i can't tell you Mine, hello like, me yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i'm standing you know either in a line or even just like i was getting on the elevator um like this trip and like I just you're always hearing people like well if I get this and then I can use this for the snack or I can if I put the if we don't do this then we get two snacks out like this whole thing and it's always just like it just seems so much and you're always like there's somebody there that doesn't know how it works and then they have to like explain the whole thing no this is included (laughs) this is not included it's just like too much work yeah yeah So, Heather, I did a little bit of Googling, and in 2009, the price of the Disney Dining Plan was $39 for the standard dining plan. Yeah. $39.99. So, yeah, so I think that was last year we had it. We had it the first time it was 2007, so that was was supposed to be our once-in-a-lifetime trip. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's the point. And is is the standard one, is it? two quick service and a sit down or is it just two quick service or three quick service? No, it's one quick, one table, one, uh, well back yeah. then, snack. back then one yeah. snack. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I don't even know what it is now, but I think, I think it's something like that. You get two snacks. They, they have a thing too. They have, cause now they have the quick service plan, which they didn't have when yes. I was back there, but they, they have it and then you can also take it and if you don't want to use a quick service you can like convert those into snacks so two snacks yes and yeah so the that's like the quick service one is going up to 52.49 which still <laughs> seems like a lot to me for quick service but i don't know i know people you know they do it and they like it and that's fine but well cuz i mean of- even if you eat even if you by yourself eat two quick service meals a day it's under $20 each time for one person Yes. Like it's not fifty dollars no. for one person. No. You know, it's that it doesn't seem like a good deal to me. And that no. snack is not worth an extra twenty dollars. <laughs> no. And I mean if you with everything now that you have to get like your fast passes, so, like you have to book your fast passes like sixty days out. You have to if you're gonna be doing a dining plan, you have to be doing like a lot of you know, reservations, like things have yeah. to overlap. I mean, it's a lot of like I need to be here, I need to be there, I need to do a lot of stuff, which again for some people like that's that's fine. Like that's what they want to do, but it's just, it's not where my mindset is now when I go to Disney. There's not enough room, wiggle room in there anymore. Yeah. Things change. Things happen. Yes. And I will second that. I, so here's how we usually do Disney. We, we actually do usually do one table service meal a day. We, and we started doing that back when we had the dining plan. We just, it works out better that way, especially when you're like in the studios where the counter service food is so bad. (laughs) <laughs> just <laughs> bad. Yeah, you text me and you're like, where do you eat at the Hollywood Studios? I'm like, well, I you don't. can leave the park. <laughs> I know. And, I know. And I, like, oh. I do like the Brown Derby. And I like Thor Lounge. Like, I've probably every time I've been there since it opened, that's where I go. I go there and I get my Cobb salad and I'm good. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. And I'll, yeah. and I'll tell you what we ended up doing that day. But I, and I did find out that kids can go into the lounge. I didn't think that they could. I just figured that, well, you know, most bars kids can't go yeah. into. Most lounges. Well, at kids Disney, can't go into, yeah. At Disney, Disney, they let different. you. Yes. The only, yeah, the pretty much the only place I think is like Trader Sam's. They don't let you in after eight. Yeah, but it's otherwise, after a certain time. Yeah, want, but like, everywhere it. else at Disney, I mean, like the bars and stuff, you'll always see just like a baby at the bar yeah. and just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, so I have this tool that's really helpful for people. If you're wondering if the dining plan is going to be good for you or not, it's called DizTripPlanner.com. Have you heard of that site? Heather? No, I don't think I have. Okay, I love it. I love it a lot. And I've been using it for the last several years since we've started going more frequently, but probably since about 2013, 
or so to figure out if it's a, if the dining plan is a good deal for me. And it every single time it reinforces in my mind that no, it's not a good deal for me. <laughs> so you go to their site and it's the Disney dining calculator and you tell us about your trip. You tell them when you're going, how many adults, how many children, and then you select your dining preferences. So you put in usually how many appetizers you order per table, per meal, how many desserts, how many snacks per person per day, you'll be eating and then refillable mugs if you'll be getting those because the refillable mugs are now included in the dining plan as well, or at least they were, they didn't change that. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I haven't, I didn't see anybody complaining about that. Okay. So everybody was all talking about the, the, the added alcohol. That they added so. alcohol, <laughs> which for people that drink alcohol, that's great for those of us that don't, I don't want to pay for, I don't want to subsidize everybody else's alcohol. <laughs> Well, I know it's also I like special. I need you special... to fund my drinking problems. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like um, special milkshakes or like yeah. smoothies and stuff. So like you have that, but I was Still, reading. We don't someone... order those with every meal. No, either. I mean, you don't do that every meal. And I, I saw somebody say that every time they have some kind of special thing like that, it adds extra time to the table. So now you're going to be like waiting yes. even longer because everybody is going to be getting these kinds of things. So it's true. That's true. That's true. So then uh, the next thing that you do on this little calculator is you go through each meal, each meal of each day, and put in which restaurant you're going to be eating at. They have it in a drop-down menu that you can select from. They have all of the counter service and all of the table service restaurants. In Disney World, the resorts, they don't have Disney Springs, but they do have the hotels, you know, Boma, stuff like that. Because we always eat there. And so before we left, I did that. And based on our reservations and stuff that we had, um, let me tell you, we don't usually, sometimes we'll order appetizers, sometimes we'll order dessert, sometimes we'll order both. We do not order one per person, though. We'll yeah. usually order something and we'll share it. Um, sometimes two desserts, sometimes three, and just share them amongst all of us. So... I had selected, let's see, was this the actuals or the real? Okay. So before we left, I had selected for our first day, lunch was counter service Yak and Yeti, dinner was Boma. Uh, the next day, lunch was Liberty Tree Tavern, and dinner was Pinocchio Village House. The third day, which was June 7th, was Lotus Blossom Cafe. It's My kids love that place in China. Love it. And then mm -hmm. um, I put La Cantina de San Angel on an hell. I don't know how to say it. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I sounded like I just swore right there. I did not swear. <laughs> this is a Disney podcast. Um, but yeah, I so I don't know how to say that. We usually will just eat at counter service places in Epcot because the food is so good there and there's so many options that we, so I just picked that one because it was one that I knew my kids liked. And then on the eighth, I had be our guest restaurant. And again, Pinocchio village house, which my husband ended up hating and we will never eat there again, <laughs> but okay. That's a different story. And then, um, on the ninth fifties primetime cafe, Backlot Express, again, Hollywood Studios. I do not like any of the counter service food there. And then on the 10th, we had Yak and Yeti counter service. Both times was Yak and Yeti counter service. And then Flame Tree Barbecue uh, for dinner. It came up saying using no plan at all based on the things that I gave them. It estimated that I would spend... $1,500, $1,504.42. Wow. And yeah. And using the quick service dining plan, it would have cost me $1,739.95. And I would have had an additional five quick service entitlements left over based on the restaurants that I chose. Um, Doing the standard Disney dining plan, that would have cost me $2,093 and change. And I would have had 20 credits left over. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or no, I would have been over. Sorry, I would have been over 20 credits. So I would have, because not all of the restaurants that I selected are on the Disney dining plan. And so I would have been over. Um, yeah, for quick crazy. service, I would have been over quick service credits by 20 and I would have had 10 table service credits left over, which they don't let you convert is my understanding. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so then the deluxe dining plan, which we would never do because that's two table service meals a day. Anyway, there's your price differences. Now I went back after we got back and plugged in what I actually, where we actually ate. And then I'll tell you what it projected the price to be, how much we would spend on food. And then I'll tell you what we actually spent so that you can plan. Again, we have a family of five. Um, and so it's my husband and me, and then I have a 17 year old son that eats like crazy because he's growing two inches a month. I swear. Your and son then, is 17 already. Yes. And oh, he's wait, almost, what? he's almost six feet. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh. I can't believe he's that old already. I know. <laughs> yeah. Me either. He's going to graduate this year. I'm, I'm having a really, wow. like, I can't even believe he's that old. <laughs> yeah. And then I have my daughter 21 that is not a huge eater. And then my youngest daughter who doesn't eat anything pretty much. <laughs> She'll eat fruit, pasta, and grilled cheese. <laughs> when we're at Disney, I think that's what she ate the whole time we were there. That's funny. Was grilled cheese and fruit. Um, so at least we have the fruit thing going for her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so where we ended up eating, our first night there, we went straight to Animal Kingdom. And so we ate at the, the Satuli Canteen. We ate, grabbed some dinner there, which is in um, Pandora. Food is amazing. Totally recommend it. We talked about that before. Um, the next day, we were at Animal Kingdom again. We did Satuli Canteen again, and then Boma that night. And then the next day, we were at Magic Kingdom, and we ended up changing our reservations. And... Dropped Liberty Tree Tavern, and we picked up Plaza Restaurant. Plaza Restaurant, I think, is a great bargain for a table service restaurant. It It has, yeah, it has great food, really great food, and the prices are about the same as the counter service. And they got rid of um, the ADRs there, right? Um, We, I made a reservation in the app. For lunch or dinner? For lunch. Okay, I think it's for dinner that they took it away from. Okay. They, they, uh, I think they did that at some point. They, like, because they had, um, sorry, I'm completely <laughs> going off what we were talking about. So you can go on. <laughs> okay, we'll go on. <laughs> <laughs> and then for dinner that night, we did Pinocchio Village House. Um, and then the next day, we picked up Garden Grill, and that was a sentimental thing. My we ate there about 10 years ago, 11 years ago when we were at Disney. That was our first Disney World trip as our family, as it is now, 11 years ago. And every time we've been to Disney since, my kids have asked me, are we going to eat at that one restaurant that goes around <laughs> in a circle? And I've, so I just decided to surprise them. And they were thrilled. They were actually super excited to be able to eat there. And the food is similar to Liberty Tree Tavern, which is why I hadn't reserved it before but since we dropped liberty tree the day before i went ahead and we i was able to add that it worked out great so we ate there we ate lunch just so you know because i think that they have um different pricing and stuff and then we did dinner at lotus blossom cafe the next day we were at magic kingdom we ended up going down going to disney springs we ate lunch at the earl of sandwich and then be our guest at dinner so on this calculator i put in no restaurant for breakfast and lunch since there's not an earl of sandwich for lunch and then the ninth we did lunch at 50s primetime cafe which we ended up half of us did that and then my youngest and I went over and got the Banshee and <laughs> ate it Satuli, <laughs> Satuli Canteen. And then we ended up doing dinner at Brown Derby because I was not going to do counter service in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> but we actually ate at Brown Derby very, very affordably. And this is how we did it. They, partially because everybody had had a big lunch earlier in the day except for my daughter and I. And so... My son was the only one that got a regular meal because he can, because he can put away that much food. Yeah, boys. I know. <laughs> so he got a regular pasta dish. That's his staple favorite thing, pasta. And then um, I don't remember what my husband got. I think he got an appetizer for his main course. Uh, my youngest one, I think she was able to find a grilled cheese. We ordered an appetizer. We ordered a dessert. And then my daughter and I each got the appetizer portion of the salads, which is the yeah. perfect size, I think. Yeah. 
for that because it's a half order of the regular and their salad the salad is really good and that's what they're famous for cob salad yes. there i could just i think i could just eat that for the rest of my life that's like one of my favorite things it's good <laughs> it's really good and that's what we got was the appetizer of the um cob salad but anyway i think our dinner there was only like 60 bucks for the round derby that's not bad for a family of five hello yeah not bad at all. Okay, the tenth, we ate breakfast at Satuli Canteen. We did counter service yak and yeti, and then we were out of there and we were done. This calculator um, predicted that I would spend nineteen hundred nineteen hundred thirty nine dollars and thirty two cents out of pocket. And then just to give you a frame of reference, it said using the quick service, I would be at twenty seven twenty two for that. Mm -hmm. I ended up paying because I kept track of everything. I had this really cool app. Let me tell you what app it is because I love tracking stuff like this. It's fun. For me. <laughs> um, it's called Hello Receipts and you can just scan your receipt and then it actually goes through and extracts all of the information where you, where you spent that money, how much money you spent, everything. And so you don't even have to enter anything. You just scan the receipt and you're good to go. That's wrong. Really what's cool. it what's it called again? Hello receipts. <laughs> Hello receipts. Now, now we're both like down right that. <laughs> yeah. And you can also export a, P, a report. So I can I've downloaded a report that summarizes everything where I spent money. And then it also has copies of all of the receipts in there if I wanted to. It's, I mean, most of the time I don't want to know how much I spent, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> If for me, it's really good. I like to have that information because then when I'm planning my next trip, I can be like, now how much yeah, money did we spend on yeah. food? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yes. Because for me, and I guess I'll editorialize right here for a minute, and I know that you girls feel the same way I do. Food for me is a big part of the memories and the experience, and especially at Disney with the themed restaurants mm -hmm. and all of those fun things going on. And I... I know that we could bring food in, bring PB&J and whatever, and save a lot more money. And that's totally a tip if that's what you want to do. But for me, a part of the big experience is eating at the restaurants. And so I want to be able to do that. And so I just budget it in yeah. so that nobody gets upset and nobody feels like we're spending too much money on food because it was already budgeted in. Yeah. I'd rather cut something else than have to scrimp on food. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't like I'll um to you know not go into the park one day and just so I can you know if that saves me on a park ticket and I'll just spend my day at downtown Disney that way I can eat there you know stuff yes. like that yeah I totally agree I um yeah I've been with people before that don't that really they're really upset about how much money food costs at Disney and it's just a lot easier if you just budget it in and say this is part of the experience. It's far more enjoyable. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> than, yeah. Than having, to, than having to worry about it. Yeah. And and feel like you're being gypped. Because guess what? Food at Disney is expensive. Just that's mm -hmm. the way it is. But you'll enjoy it a lot more if you can just budget it in and enjoy the experience and do some fun and memorable things. And that's when I ask my kids what they remember there isn't a time where they don't talk about some meal that we had at some restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that with the garden grill, you know, that one restaurant that goes around in a circle for years, <laughs> they've been asking to go back. It's a good memory for our family. So, um, yeah. Okay. Done with my editorial off my soapbox. Okay. So what <laughs> I actually ended up spending, I got to find it in my notes. Um, was $1,300.38. So I actually spent $600 less um, than, than what they projected. Than what they even projected. And so I definitely, if you're trying to figure out how much money to budget, definitely go put all your stuff in there and I would go buy it. I normally budget as a rule of thumb, and this is what I tell people, $50 per person per day for food. And mm -hmm. that allows us to be able to either do, you know, one day where we're doing all table service and then the next day we're going to splurge and go to Boma. Boma is more expensive. It was one of the more expensive meals that we did. And it's so good. It's <laughs> so good. And it's a good memory for our family too. That's the one place that everyone wants to go. And the food is so good. Um, but it is more expensive. And so, you know, we'll, that's how kind of how we'll adjust things and move things around so that we can have 
some of those other experiences. But as a rule of thumb, it's $50 per person per day. That includes snacks too. So that um, I learned early on as my kids were growing, I guess not early on enough because there were some times when people were grumpy. I won't name names, but some people would get grumpy about (laughs) people being hungry and needing snacks during the middle of the day. And we would take snacks with us, but you can only eat so many granola bars before you need some sustenance. And so really just budgeting that in has saved so many conflicts in our family and made (laughs) our Disney experience so much more enjoyable for everybody. So that's my rule of thumb, but this turned out to be, after I did the math, it turned out that we spent about $46 per person per day on food. So I think $1,300 to feed a family of five at Disney for a week, not yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah. I Especially because also... you guys do a sit-down meal every day. Yes. Yep. And there was one day that we did too, because... <laughs> I was not going to eat counter service at Hollywood Studios. I was super hangry and I feel really bad for my poor husband because everybody in my family suffers from hangriness except for him. He suffers from our hangriness because we're all mean and ornery. But yeah, I, I get like that for sure. Yes, I was beyond that point. I'm like, I don't care where we eat, but I'm not eating at counter service. And so he went and talked to the nice lady in Brown Derby and was like, <laughs> my, I have some hangry people in my group. Is there any way you can get us in? <laughs> and she laughed and laughed and she got us in. So it worked That's out good. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazon Prime Now. I did order, I did place an Amazon Prime Now order. If you're not familiar with Amazon Prime Now, it is grocery delivery through Amazon and they'll deliver it within a two, two hours of when you place the order. So I, um, place and you can schedule delivery ahead of time. I placed the order the day before we left to go down there and had it scheduled to be delivered to the Caribbean beach resort. Um, I think it was going to be a, the time that we landed. We landed at seven at night and I think that's when I scheduled it to be delivered. And Bell Services will take all of that stuff for you. They'll put the cold stuff in the fridge and keep it there for you. And then when you get there, they will deliver it to your room for you. That's awesome. Yeah. And their fridge is in the room. So I did want to give a rundown and I'm sorry if this is too much information for people, (laughs) (laughs) but I did want to give a rundown of what we ordered ahead of time. This is something that I was curious about before we left. And I actually did research to find out what are people ordering on Amazon prime now? Will it work? Will I be able to get the groceries delivered? And it worked fabulously, perfectly. I was so glad that I did it. So I ordered two eight counts Gatorade. Mm -hmm. And I ordered some batteries because I had ordered handheld fans for everybody so that we could survive (laughs) the heat. So I got extra batteries for those. And then some organic milk. The produce, one thing to notice with or note with Amazon Prime is that a lot of the produce is organic only. That's your only option. It lasts longer. It does last longer. and The milk lasts longer, I should say. The milk is so much better tasting too. Yeah, I always, I don't, we don't drink much milk like here at home. So I always get organic milk because it's good for like a month and a half. Yeah. As opposed to a week and a half. Yeah. (laughs) We don't go through it fast enough. So I always get organic milk. It does taste better. It does taste better. I totally agree. So it, it's fine with me. Okay. And then I got two boxes of these Nature Valley biscuit, blueberry breakfast biscuits that my family thinks are the bomb. And I got some laughing cow cheese. I got one, how, what was the quantity on that? One, um, 24 counts of Nestle water, 16 ounce. Yeah. Yeah. Frosted mini wheats. See the milk and the cereal was for my teenage boy, you know, that's all they yeah. eat. It's cold cereal. <laughs> um, and then I got two, this, the most important thing on the order, two 12 <laughs> packs of Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's not going without a Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> and then two, um, eight counts of Powerade and a thing of bagels for my oldest daughter. So we had all of that. We went through all of the, Powerade, Gatorade, and water that we had. I wish that I would have ordered maybe even one more. One I say or drinks, two is, more. drinks is, it's smart to order drinks. Yes. 
And we, sure. every morning we went into the park, each of us with a Powerade or a bottle of water. Yeah. Um, and then my son actually was a trooper and he volunteered to carry every a bottle of water for everybody. So we all walked into the park with water or Powerade or something in our hand. And, then and he, a backup? Yes. It wasn't that nice of him. Yeah. Jeez, <laughs> that's heavy. Yes. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, you really don't need to do that. We can get free water cups because that's a tip. Yeah. You can get free water at any. I always just refill my bottle that I'm carrying too. Yes. And you can do that too. And he's like, oh no. I He like, he really wanted to be able to serve our family and take care of us that way. So. <laughs> Okay, buddy. Good. All right, then. <laughs> yep. Have at it. So that's that's our total. That's everything that we spent. So if you add those two together, it's just over fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. Is that right? Is my math right? $1,300. Yeah, probably. And, then, and that's still even cheaper. Yeah, it is. So I felt like we did really well. Um, because I think that that's something that you can, like I said, budget in and be able to mm-hmm. experience some of those things. And yeah. Especially because, especially breakfast items, because yes. you know, there's, we, I am not a breakfast person. I am more likely never even going to be up in time for breakfast. <laughs> so it's like having a, a like, I'll, a lot of the times Heather and I will grab like a croissant on our way out of the park. So we have it for in the morning, you yes. know, that sort of thing. Cause I'm also not, even though we do it every now and then not a full meal at breakfast person. Like, I like breakfast food, but a lot of the time I'm just like, I literally just woke up and I just can't eat a full meal right now. Yeah. So getting breakfast I- snack items, like on-the-go items, is always smart. Yes. And I did bring with me – have you guys heard of the G2G power bars? No. Okay. I love them. Um, they're protein bars. You have to order them. You can get them through Amazon, but they don't, they're not Amazon prime. So they don't, they're not shipped and sold by Amazon. They're shipped and sold by the company. And I wish I knew what uh, G2G stands for, but they're all natural power bars and they're gluten-free as well. They're so good. And so I brought, um, a couple of boxes of those with me and that's what I have for breakfast almost every morning. Yeah. I'm I, obsessed with the, um, the fiber one lemon bars. Mm-hmm. Like I literally had two of those in the last hour. <laughs> those are so like, they're not very big, but they're like a perfect little tide me over sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. So it, it works out great. I, I do love breakfast. I'm a big breakfast person, but I don't want to take the time. And our, my yeah. family, when we're at Disney world and with it, when we were, when I had little kids and we would go to Disney world, Totally. We could make it to rope drop. It was great. The older my kids get, the harder it is. And we didn't make it to the parks. We only made it to the parks one day before 10 or 11. Yeah. And it's, I mean, especially if you're, if you're actually up in time for breakfast, you want to rope drop and you want to get yes. on those rides. And then by the time you finish doing that stuff, it's now almost lunchtime. Yes. Like you've already missed breakfast because you want to run around and get that stuff before the crowds get there. So you miss yeah. breakfast altogether anyway. Yeah. I would rather do a breakfast on the go. When I'm at Disney, I'd rather do yeah. a breakfast on the go and then an early lunch. Yeah. Or sometimes you can even get the, like a 1055 breakfast reservation. That works out great yeah. too. Yeah, the very last breakfast uh-huh. reservation. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah, like if you go to Crystal Palace and you get that, like you'll get both their lunch and <laughs> breakfast. Awesome. <laughs> like they have breakfast and then, yeah. They put out the lunch, yeah. Yeah, and they don't like kick you out or anything. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So, those, that, there you have it. There's helping you budget from my perspective for a family of five. Eating at Disney World. Heather, I know that you've talked before about some of the ways that you save money. You and I have talked about it before. Do you remember them? <laughs> um. <laughs> you were the one that introduced <laughs> me to um, that restaurant that's in, I think, the boardwalk or, you know, where you can get really good hamburgers. Beaches um, and cream? Yes. Beaches and cream. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. That's another really affordable <laughs> table service restaurant that has like counter service prices I think yeah they're really good and um there's another like at this one in Dolphin they have like the fountain which is the same kind of thing it's like because now beaches and cream they take you have to have an ADR Mm -hmm. so it's kind of harder to sit there to like get a walk up okay 
yeah. thing. So, yeah. So you can do that, too. Like, because I remember, I remember some of this one, I was saying, like, so many things kind of just seem like second nature. So, like, I don't even think about it until, like, you remind me, like, oh, yeah, that's the tip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I know. But I know that there are things that you do when you're eating in the parks. Do you... So you don't normally do table service or do you have a rule of thumb well, for that? I do. Yeah. I mean, I, cause a lot of times if I go like a, a solo trip, like I'm not going to like have table service. So I don't really do that as much. And then other times like, you know, I'll, I'll have maybe one or two, like if I do a race, I'd like to have like a, a meal, like a nice meal after like the half. And like we were talking about with breakfast, like I'll usually do some kind of breakfast like I love okay a good tip I love the wave uh-huh. and that's I think a good um they're not expensive and so I love their breakfast that's actually the only um reservation I have for this coming trip at least so far is a wave breakfast and you get it's a buffet but you also can and they don't really tell you this but you can get in addition to that uh, ready to make like they'll make you a, um, an egg any way you want. So you can get like an omelet or like two eggs any way, you, you know, slice that up, whatever. And that, that's in like included in your buffet. buffet. Mm-hmm. And they also have, they just started, uh, I think like a week or so ago, they have like bottomless mimosas. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So <laughs> let me try that. I don't know. Cause usually I'll go there as my post 10k breakfast like before the half so like i wouldn't drink anyway but that's like a thing they just started so switch it after switch it after the half (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) come on (laughs) and they have like they have these sweet potato pancakes that are like the most i love it that there so that's i think it's a it's a really nice it's a buffet but then you get all this extra stuff also and it's affordable and they they take you know a lot of these places too. When I when I go, especially like at Disneyland, they'll ask you, "Are you an annual pass holder?" But they don't do that at Disney World. They no, they just, don't. I don't know. So I ask, "All right, do you have an AP discount? Do you have you know Disney Visa discount?" So like go through if you're like a DVC, you'd ask that. So you ask all that stuff. And a lot of these restaurants are now starting to have, um, you know, annual pass discounts. A lot of them have uh, if you have a Disney Visa card that they have that. So they have both of them. So you get ten percent off. In addition to, like, I think it's, um, I don't know how much it is, but it's a cheaper meal, I think, than some of the other sit-downs. It's always been good. And yeah. it's not crowded either. And then you're at the Contemporary, so you can walk right over to the Magic Kingdom. Yes, that's what I was going to say. It's at the Contemporary. And so you could even, if it were me, I'd probably Uber over there, because otherwise you have to do transportation hopping. Um. So I would. Well, Uber you can take. There. I mean, yeah, I would Uber. That's what I've done because usually, for some reason lately, I'm always like running late <laughs> for the meal. So like I would Uber it anyway. But you can take, you know, to the Magic Kingdom the bus or whatever, and then you can just walk right over. It's like a five-ish minute walk. It's yeah. really easy. it's easy. And then this the line for security right there. Nothing. Oh, I know. It's, they changed the way. I don't think. Did we even talk about that? How they changed we the whole security thing at the Magic Kingdom? It is so much better now. Yes, it is. Because they have everything separate. So, like, if you're getting on the monorail, you go through security first, and then you just like walk right in. It's so open. the The security, if you're walking over from the Contemporary, has its own, you know, security. And, oh, it's, it's so much nicer. I'm so glad they did that. Yes. Yeah, me too. I I like it a lot. It makes things so much easier and better. Yeah, so that's and that's a great idea too. The great tip too about um, the annual pass. I totally forgot to include that. Some of our meals did include an annual pass discount. Uh, if they offered it, we took them up on it. So that, I guess <laughs> keep that in mind that if you don't have an annual pass, your meals might be a little bit more expensive than ours, and that could be. So where some of that difference came in too from the calculator to what I actually paid. Yeah. yeah and some of them now even have 20% off. Yes. So that's nice. So. I think we got 20% off at Boma. I think it is 20%. I think I a know. lot of the places, yeah, have been 20%. I, I want to go to Boma. I love Boma. Oh, I go there like almost every trip. But it's like, my mom's always like, it's so far out of the way if you're not in Animal Kingdom. So 
It is <laughs> far out of the way. Worth the trip, though, I think. Totally worth it. Yeah. Have, have you done breakfast there? No, I haven't. And I told my husband. It's he, really yeah, good. We need to try it. He didn't even yes. know that they had breakfast. So we need to try it. Yeah, we did that, um, I think, in February. And it was because I had a kind of, early, for me, an early flight. So I had time pretty much just for breakfast. And so, yeah, we went there. And it was really good. Yeah, I need to try it. And For breakfast sure. is always cheaper than like dinner. Yes. <laughs> so, if you were And they yes. have a lot of like the same like Boma had some uh-huh. of their like lunch stuff or whatever out for even though it was and it was funny because they didn't have zebra domes, but um, my boyfriend was like, Can we have zebra domes? <laughs> and they brought us some stuff. Oh nice. Yes. <laughs> Nice. Yes. And lunches at table service is always less expensive than dinner too. And so if we found that that's a great way to break up the day a little bit is to make a reservation at a table service and in the middle of the day, and then it's going to be less expensive. And a lot of times like Boma and Garden Grill, it's the same. Well, Boma doesn't do lunch, but Garden Grill, it's the same menu for lunch and dinner. I'll tell you that Le Cellier is not cheaper for lunch. Yes, that's that true. Hard. That is <laughs> true. Yeah, I because I, I, I hadn't been there in a couple of years, maybe, and we got a reservation for it was like two. So I'm like, okay, I haven't been there. That used to be actually one of my favorite places to go, and like, I looked at the menu and I think I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> I'm like, this is so. It was like fifty dollars or something for like the, you know steak I normally or the filet I normally get and I got it because that's what I wanted and it was nothing else on the menu I wanted to get it but yeah <laughs> so they do not have separate prices for lunch so you can budget that in if you're planning to go there but if yeah. you're doing you know like if you're doing the dining plan I guess it's usually isn't it sometimes less I don't know I haven't done it in a while maybe not it's still two well, it's, I guess yeah it's two table service credits if you're on a dining plan so um, okay, Tiffins, let's talk about that, the package. Oh, yes. Oh, see, see, I would have forgotten all these things you didn't remind me. That's good. I, <laughs> Tiffins is a new, um, is a new restaurant at, it's like right outside Pandora. So it's like just before you walk in there and they have, um, they also have a lounge there, which I really like, but their food actually is expensive. There's like a whole like thing on Twitter where they joke about like they have wings and they're $10 and there's like two of them or something. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's expensive. Yeah. The food at the lounge, it's a nomad lounge is expensive. So like if you're trying to be cheaper, like don't get that. But the Tiffins has a special thing for lunch and it's, um, I think it's like two entrees and then they also give you like noodles and bread and it's, I think it's his twenty. Seven dollars, I think it is. I haven't done it in a couple of bit, but it is like a really good deal because you get to sample, and it's not like a tiny little bit of food. Like I didn't even finish what I got, and everything there is delicious. I've had lunch there, I think it's three times now. We had dinner there, and it was really good. But I actually like the lunch better because you get a couple different things, and it was way cheaper. <laughs> and everything, I mean, everything. Is really good there, so I totally recommend going. Um, the the funny thing is because I want to try the place in Pandora, but it's like, but I also like Tiffins. Like, yeah. I can't, you know, like I'm trying to decide. Like, oh, I really like Tiffins lunch, <laughs> and usually you can kind of walk up to it. I don't know if it's going to be like that now that Pandora is like right there, so maybe more people will know about it. But before they used to have actually somebody standing like outside. Not the restaurant, but more like towards the walkway to uh-huh. be like, hey, hey, come in. But uh-huh. now that Pandora's there, people probably know more. But I don't know if it's still crowded, but it was one of those ones that you could walk up. Because that's one of the things I, again, since I don't plan a lot, it's uh, I do a lot of walk-ups if I can. And there's still, even though you think you have to make so many reservations, like, you can still get walk-ups to a lot of places. <laughs> so Yeah. Not usually be our guest and not usually. Well, you can get, I've gotten like last minute to breakfast there, although I do not recommend breakfast there. <laughs> that is not a good deal for the money. Did you get, have you eaten breakfast there? I haven't. Mm-mm. Okay. That is not a good deal for the money. I think of any of the, I'm, I'm not, it's beautiful inside, but it's not for me anymore. It's gone 
I found downhill since it opened, I thought. But the breakfast, like, they don't give you that much. And it was so expensive. And we got, uh, um, like, they had a kid's meal of French toast. Mm -hmm. And so my mom and I thought, oh, yeah, we'll share that as, like, a in addition to our thing. And it was, like, like half of like half of a half of oh. French toast. It was like the kids. It was just, it was not a good deal for the money. So that's, that's like an, an opposite tip. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think, I think walk up reservations a lot of times depend on what time of year you're going to. Um, I've had a more difficult time and probably breakfast versus the other meals too. But it's also, I'm usually asking for one or two and yes, you're I'm looking for, for like, five. So it's definitely harder yes. for like a family than yes, if you're like sure. lonely like me. And- <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. I wanted to mention the dining packages for Rivers of Light. I just Light. remember too, the, um, the other place, I think maybe that's where you were thinking of that. I, the um, lounge at the yacht club. The, no, um, no, I was thinking of Tiffin's. Cruise Cup. Yeah. No, Go but ahead. I mean, we were talking about Beaches and Cream. Oh, okay. You were saying about the burger. They, um, there's, it's Cruise Cup and it's in the Yacht Club. And it's like right next door to the um, Yachtsman. That's a good one that you can get a walk up to. And there is a good price and their food is always really good too. So that's actually like when I'm, there's, you know, the Hollywood Studios or sometimes I will go over there to eat. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. That's Thank good you know. to know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tiffin's, they have a Rivers of Light dining package. If doing Rivers of Light is something you're interested in. We, my husband and I did this when we were there in April. I wouldn't spend this much for my kids. It's an, it, Tiffin's is a nice restaurant and it's expensive. The food is very expensive, um, but it is very, very good too. And we did, so we did the Rivers of Light package because we knew that we wanted to see that. And it's $67 per adult. And with that, you each get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. And then they also bring you bread and all of that good stuff. It includes your drink, but I don't think it includes alcoholic beverages. Let's see. No, that does not include that. And then you get reserved seating you know, tickets to get into the reserve seating for Rivers of Light. They also gave us, and I don't know if this was just a special thing that they were doing. They also gave us one of those Lily light up popcorn buckets. Cute. Mm. That are like 20 bucks normally yeah. in the park. And it was, so they gave us that for free and we could go for it. I like when you up. get like a, like a little perk. It's always nice to get yes. a, little, a little gift, a little gift. <laughs> It was a little surprise that we didn't know we were getting, and it made us feel so special. And my husband looked adorable yeah. packing that glow light up <laughs> <laughs> lily around the park because they have this strap so that you can wear it like a, um, like you know, uh, like, like a like a purse. Yes, like a purse. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to think of the style of purse, but I can, a messenger bag like, like a cross, the like a cross, cross yeah. body purse. Yes. Yeah. So that's he was wearing it around, and then we were able to get it filled with popcorn for the show for just a dollar fifty. Because nice. you get the refill price since you already have the bucket, which I thought was, it was just, yeah, it was fun. I loved popcorn. I know. Disney popcorn is so good. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, for a special treat, if you wanted to, it's a way to be able to experience things uh, for less expensive. Um, we ended up ordering the Wagyu beef and I'm going to go flip over to the Tiffin's menu really quick and see how much it was. Cause that was the most expensive yes. thing. And that's even one of the things on the, uh, the lunch that you can pick from. Yeah. Because I know I got that. Yeah. It's, it's really $53. Good. So the Wagyu beef is $53. And then we got our appetizer and our dessert on top of that. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Those are all the tips I have. Do you have any more, Heather? Um, no, what about for Disneyland? I was just gonna say I have um maybe two tips. Okay. Maybe I don't know. Maybe this. I've got a couple too. Guys. Yeah, I've okay. got a couple. Too, um, but... I was just gonna say to eat in lounges. Like I love Carthay Circle, but don't always want. Don't always have a reservation if they isn't most of the, most Disneyland restaurants restaurants you can walk up to. It's usually not an issue, but if I don't have a reservation or I just am by myself and I don't want to have a sit down meal, I love the lounge at Carthay Circle. 
they have good appetizers and it's quick in and out and you still get the ambiance of being in Carthay Circle. Yeah. There's a couple different lounges for restaurants. Um, I was also going to say that I know Pizza Port does it. I'm not sure if Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta does. They probably do. Um, you can buy a whole pizza for your family. Oh. It, you don't have to buy it by the slice. You can order a whole pizza and they'll make you a whole pizza. That's nice. Yeah. If um, you like the <laughs> Yeah. Cafe Orleans has a very similar menu to Blue Bayou without the price tag. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Blue I Bayou. I like it better than Blue I, Bayou. <laughs> I do too, actually. I do. A lot of Blue Bayou, you're paying for the atmosphere, and that's a really fun thing to experience for a special occasion or yeah. – yeah. But it's, it's not necessary all the time. It's not necessary, but you can get really good food at Cafe Orleans for a fraction of the price. Yeah. Carnation Cafe, I love, and I feel like it has very similar prices to counter service restaurants. Mm-hmm. But it, again, it's a table service, so it's a higher quality of food. Uh, Bengal Barbecue, you can do that for a <laughs> meal. It's one of my favorites. I know it's yours too. Yeah. About. Yeah, I like that. And it's then, kind of expensive, though, isn't it? Yeah, I, it? It depends. I think I, it can get very expensive depending on how much you eat. Yeah, how <laughs> like, hungry y'all are. Because I guess. Those, yeah, because <laughs> those. I mean, because barely, rarely anybody goes there and gets just one skewer. Like you're looking at two or three usually, depending on. So if you're getting it as a one skewer snack, it, it's a little pricey for a snack. Oh, so but, I didn't think it is for a snack. I think it's more pricey for a meal because you got to eat more. True. I, I mean, how much are the skewers now? Are they 10 bucks a piece? Are, no. Are they? No. I don't know. I'm going to look right now. Yeah, look. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know. Because I mean, we used to eat there all the time when I was little. And I that, I think that was the reason we had kind of stopped eating there is because it got a little expensive. Yeah. Especially because we want to try everything, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but I, yeah, that one just depends. But the quality is good. And I mean, I, I like them. Yeah, I do too. I definitely I do too. I also, the plaza that we've talked about their fried chicken before, um, it's definitely big enough that you can share for sure. Okay. Yeah. I, don't remember, I don't remember them being this cheap. <laughs> I'm like $10. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. They're another $5 piece. That's, I thought they were about five. I could have sworn they were way more expensive than that. I'm going to start eating Ooh. there more. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't, didn't you feel Heather the last time we went there that we f- spent a lot of money there? Yeah, that's how you're. Were you doing, doing it as a meal though, like as a full meal? We each had what two skewers, really? Yeah, and then you. And drink. I felt like I felt like I spent way more, but we also got the bread. Oh, and then if you so had a maybe, drink on know. top of that, I'm sure yeah. that you felt like you spent a lot and weren't maybe full. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Never mind, they're not that expensive, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's those are my tips. I. Because I like to have good quality food, and so I, I'll give up a counter service to eat at a similar price table service restaurant any day of the week. Did you mention the Jolly Holiday Bakery? Ooh, I love it there. No. I love it there, yeah, too. Yeah, I love it there, too. <laughs> and they have good food. Yeah. Yeah. Really and good food. Really good food. Their Jolly they- Holiday combo is worth it every time. Yeah. Yeah. Also, for kids' meals, you don't have to get, or any of them, where it's a combo, you don't have to get the combo. Like, especially at Disney World, you can break it down. And we often split. My daughter and I split because food portions, especially in the U.S. these days, can be big. Yeah, quite large. (laughs) Yeah. And so we'll often split, and that saves money. And really, I don't want to waste food. And that's... That's the lecture my kids always get anytime we go to Disney. Don't order more than you can eat. Only order what you can yeah. eat. And they do a really good job. And so we just try to make sure that we're sharing if we're not that hungry, that we kind of gauge ourselves and what we're feeling. But yeah, there's a lot of, and you don't have to get the combo. Like with my, and with my, a lot of times restaurants, you can order sides of specific things. Like I said, my youngest loves fruit. So if there wasn't a grilled cheese, we ordered a side of fruit and that's what she had for her meal. So (laughs) So funny. Yeah, I know. Okay. Those are my tips. Oh, with the corn dog cart in Disneyland, I don't like the chips. And so, but they sell it as a meal. You don't have to get the meal. You don't have to get the chips. And you don't have to get the drink. Um, you they don't. You don't have to get the chips. No, you can just get a corn oh. dog. 
Because I'll often just get a corn dog there and then go over to the cor- Coke corner to get a diet cherry Coke. Yeah. So, yeah. My other tip is to go to the corn dog castle in DCA as opposed to the one in <laughs> Magic Kingdom because the line story is way too long. Yes. <laughs> the one at Disneyland is always so long. Yeah. It's the truth. Usually. <laughs> yeah. And they're the same, right? Yeah. They're exactly the same. And actually, there's more options at Corn Dog Castle because you can get cheese on a stick and stuff there, too. Yes, that's true. So good. Okay, that's all I got for you. Yeah, I think there's not that many, like, money-saving food tips for Disneyland. Not as many. And I don't I don't try. I mean, I do the same budget for Disneyland as I do Disney World. And um, I can usually spend 40 to $50 per person per day. So. And that's like pushing it at Disneyland. Like it's hard to spend that much at Disneyland. <laughs> there's not nearly as many places to eat. Like as far as sit down restaurants. Right. There's I mean, lots of really good snacks. Like holy cow. Yeah. I could eat so yeah. many of those macaroons from Jolly Holiday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Disneyland is definitely. If you can fill up on snacks, man, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's remind our listeners where to find us, Tanya. You can find me at everymagicmoment.com and Tanya H666 on all social media. And Heather? On my character site's heatherw.com slash character. And on social media, I'm heatherw25. And on Facebook, it's I Love Characters. And we're also at Capturing Magic underscore on Instagram. And we're at Capturing Magic Me on Facebook. And you can also find me at modernphotosolutions.com. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for listening and spending part of your day with us. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Capturing Magic.